This is Andy Poirot for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm joined by our trainer Peter Fury here in Manchester. Peter, first and foremost, Happy New Year. How, how are you doing? Has everything been ticking over? How, how have you enjoyed New Year so far? I've enjoyed it. It's been very good. Um, had a good relaxing uh, Christmas. Spent it with uh, the family. I'm back, back to work. So yeah, just relaxed at, uh, at home. That's what everybody does, but enjoyed it. Just about the Christmas period and trying to just switch off for what I assume was just a couple of weeks before getting back into the nitty gritty of the boxing world. How difficult is it to kind of just allow yourselves those couple of weeks to focus away from boxing? Oh, it's not difficult for me. I just uh, went home and uh, enjo enjoyed the Christmas. I always like Christmas anyway. So I had a nice time with the family. Um, but now it's strictly business and... Uh, we're back easing in this week, and uh, from Monday the sparring starts, so uh, all systems go. Now, one thing I didn't know, and you only told me when I arrived, is you've gone into uh, veganism now. You've been a vegan for the past few weeks. How are you finding that? A lot of fighters, as I said to you, kind of going down that route as well. I think a lot of it with me, I, you know, I didn't eat pork anyway, down to me religion and stuff, and um, I don't eat uh, any game fowl or anything like that because I've got allergies and stuff, so it's pretty easy for me anyway. And I don't take hardly any dairy, so so it was not not not, not a big thing. So like I said, it's not a problem for me, and uh, yeah, I feel better on it, and uh, it's uh, it's it's good. Are you trying to attempt Huey to go down that route as well, or well, we'll see, uh, we'll see see what happens. But it's uh, everybody's up to their own choices, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so that's the way it is. Obviously, as we mentioned, now we're, the boxing season is starting to. Gain some motion now, gain some traction, building back up into what will hopefully be another busy 2020. Talks about the plans moving forwards with both Huey and Savannah. Starting off with Huey, what have the early dis discussions been with Eddie and MTK, etc.? Yeah, I'm in discussions with MTK, with Eddie as well, and uh, we're all um, waiting, um, waiting for Eddie to come back to us. He's going to come back to us very soon now with uh, dates. Um, so that's where we're at, so we're expecting a date pretty quick so um, Yui and Savannah will be boxing uh, hopefully in February What, what is the, the plan for Huey this year obviously I know you've still got those ambitions to go and to win another world title he's only 25 still he's just, turned 25, just, yeah. just turned 25 so he's still obviously relatively young in, in the boxing world what, what is the plans towards moving towards world titles because you've obviously got Anthony Joshua who will have to face his mandatory in either Kubrat Pule or Alexander Usyk next presumably if he doesn't make it he'll have to face the other one after that and obviously you've got Deontay facing Tyson and they'll possibly have a rematch later down the line as well this year those belts might be tied up so what is the plan with Huey? The plan with Huey is to get, get him active and uh, take what fights are available so we'll have a look what's put in front of us and um but certainly to get back in the mix very quick. Um, like I said, he, uh, I don't know what this next fight's going to be, but if we, even if we got offered a good fight in, this, uh, in his comeback fight in February or whatever, he'd take, he'd take that. So like I said, it's, uh, we're going to get him moving um, back into world contention this year. Now obviously, it's been about what is he? It was August when he fought Alexander Povetkin, so it's about five, five months ago now since that, since that night. You've had time to reflect. I remember when I came up beforehand, you said one of his issues was he wasn't mean enough, he wasn't letting his right hand go enough. Did you feel that you saw enough of that or you didn't see enough of that on, in that fight and what went wrong against Povetkin? We've made, he's made some drastic changes, uh, which he needed to do. Um, but it's all part of his experience. Um, and, you know, look, fighters need to be exciting. And um, it's not just about moving around the ring you know, to be fair, me looking at his, all of his top fights on world level, he's been fighting them on one hand. So um, his arsenal and his, his array of punches and stuff like that has been missing. So, um, you know, he's got a lot more to give. He's doing a lot more. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing him perform in his next fight and letting everybody see as well. What do you think it is that he hasn't allowed his right hand just to let it go and just to maybe enjoy the the extra destruction it could possibly cause people if he was to able to land it and if he was able to show his power off. But why do you think it is that he kind of holds it back? Well, we know the reason why, and it's, uh, it's like anything else. He's just got to get, um, <coughs> you know, it'll be evident to see when he has his next fight. 
you know, people will see why that is and the changes that's been made. But, um, you know, things take time, you know, so he hasn't done himself any harm. But look, it's all to play for for him. He just needs, he just needs basically to throw a lot more shots, a lot more combinations and letting that backhand go fluently because he can hit. So not to release it and just to sit back and use the jab and move around it's just uh, it's it's been very frustrating as well. But we've uh, we've come over that hurdle, and um, in his next fight, which is not long to wait, people will see exactly what he's about. But I I believe he's going to rip through the heavyweight division very quickly as well. Where where would you rank you in amongst the heavyweight division? Where where would you say that he he could be? Is he a top ten fighter? Or is he just that side? What are your thoughts? I think he's above that. I think um, I think when people have a look at him in February, if we get him on. I think people's going to see, you know, they're looking at uh, what he's done in the past, and you know, I, I get it, but this is uh, this is somebody that's not been able to release his shots, and um, like I said, we've solved that problem. So let's uh, let's let's see what he does. But I'm excited for for Yui. I think he's definitely gonna uh, he's gonna shock a few people next. You've obviously had that reflection as well on the Povetkin fight. What have you learned about Huey since then? Well, what do we know with him? We know he can do the 12 rounds. We know we know he's got a good chin, um, you know. But you know that's about it. You know, he, obviously he is on a world level because all these fighters they have a hard time with him. So, like I said, um, he's just not doing enough. So we know what the problems are. So he has to rectify it. Don't get me wrong. If I was sitting here and I was looking at the same fighter and he's doing the same things in the sparring, then <laughs> you know, there'd be serious problems. But he's young, and it's all about fixing the problems. So, like I said, he's turned the corner. He's a lot stronger, bigger. So, um, let's see. It's exciting for him. Povetkin, last time out, uh, he, he fought on the Anthony Joshua Ruiz undercard in Saudi Arabia, drew with Michael Hunter. What was your thoughts on his fight there? Yeah, he was hurting Hunter a lot, physically hurting him a lot. You know, he... Um, Hunter was in trouble quite a few times, but he couldn't he couldn't get the to finish him off, and uh, Hunter fought back well as well. So it was a it was a nip and tuck fight. So it was one of them. So um, like I said, Hunter's a very good fighter, and um, you know Povetkin's no mug as we know, you know. So um, but to be fair, we've already asked Eddie, and I know MTK have uh, asked him as well. We'd we'd like that rematch with Povetkin if we could get it. We take it straight away if we could get that far, because um, you know. Well, I, I don't want to predict anything. We'd just like that rematch if we could get it. But it's whether Povetkin and his team will take it. But we'll definitely take it, and we'll take price cuts, whatever it takes to take that fight. So, like I said, we take that straight away now. So it's uh, it's one of them. I know he's on, on the times when he's, he's stepped up to board level, he's just fallen short. But how much credit does he deserve because of how young he was when he first fought Joseph Parker? Then he goes in with Alexander Povetkin, in and amongst other guys as well. You know, how much credit does Huey actually deserve for taking those fights? I don't know. Look, if we was in the seventies, you know, and if it was in the seventies, you know, we wouldn't be talking like this because it was all part of the course. You know, it's a lot of crap to be honest. You know, he's a fighter. And to be good and, and learn your trade properly, that's what I believe. Get in there. Get in there and get wet. You know, you, you're not going to win them all. You know, but look, he's got a fabulous talent. You know, look, let's put it this way. In boxing, it's like this. When you put him in and they get tested and they're falling apart, they get stopped badly or something like this happens, then you can say to yourself, you know, mm, they might be young, but is the future really there? You know, and I'd say it wouldn't be. Because time and time again, when we look at fighters where they're getting collapsed quite a lot and this and that coming up for the ranks, they, they really make it. This is another fighter on another level completely. He's got all the tools, he's got all the DNA, he, he's, he can do, go the 12 rounds, he doesn't get overawed under pressure, you know, he's been in with world-class fighters, doesn't fall apart, he's even gone through fights injured, you know, he's come through the cuts, he's done all of that ticks every box but like I said the main box is not ticked is getting the punches off and flowing properly and like I said we've solved that problem so you're going to see UE do a different style of fighter 
and you're going to see him coming forward a lot as well, and he'll be looking for the knockouts. Obviously, I saw of social media as well. You've got Martin Bacoli coming up for a few weeks to join your camp and work with Billy Nelson and yourself. What is the plan with you know, What do you see in Martin that will benefit Huey in sparring? Martin's a phenomenal fighter. You know, I've, we've had him in camp before, and Billy's a good friend of mine, and I highly rate Martin Bacoli. He's, uh, he's come on such a lot that kid, and um, he throws a lot of punches. You know, he's got a nice relaxed style with him. You know, we're, we're all looking at the Hunter fight, but these things happen. You know, he, you know, whatever, he didn't perform there. But, you know, look what he'd done. He went over to Poland and look what he'd done with Wack. You know, and we've seen Wack against Dillian, you know. Wack's not a fool. Wack is a good fighter, you know. And I saw that fight. And, you know, it wasn't like where Bacoli got lucky. Bacoli completely outfought him, outgamed him, and just threw too many punches. And he caught up with Wack, and that was the end of it. So he's... He's, um, he's, you know, prov providing he's, he's mentally focused, which I think he is. He's grown a lot. I think Bacoli's going to be a force. He's, uh, he's, gonna be, he's, he's definitely one that's going to be creeping up onto the world stage, stage very soon. Probably by the end of this year, he'll have made his mark, Bacoli. So he's, um, he's perfect sparring for us. And he, I knew he's good sparring for him. So it, uh, it suits. So we're over the moon with the sparring. And this is the kind of levels we want. We want good fighters. You mentioned lots of, you know, Dillian White, Marius Vakin, etc. We've touched on Povetkin, all of those guys obviously fought on the Ruiz, uh, AJ undercard in Saudi. We'll come on to that later on. But just to stick with you guys moving on to Savannah as well now, what is the plans with Savannah moving into 2020? Uh, we'd like Savannah to have another fight moving in just after the Christmas in February as well and then uh, hopefully a world title. I know they've got a show in April there up in uh, Newcastle. So it'd be nice for Savannah to um, have a world title fight up there. But certainly she's one fight away. So probably, um, hopefully, we can get a world title. Um, well, Eddie can get a world title in April. There's always a, a lot of talk about her potentially facing Clarissa Shields at some point as a professional, obviously fought as an amateur. Is that a fight which you guys have discussed at all? For me, my plan for Savannah would be for this, you know, one fight in uh, February, a world title fight in uh, April. I think they've got a couple of belts between them in their weight. So uh, whoever we can get there, and should she come through that, which I believe she will, then straight away, you know, look for a unification fight, whoever's got the belts next. So we're looking, for me, for Savannah, I'd like to see Savannah have two back-to-back -back world title fights to clean up to unify the, the super middleweight division. What have you learned about Savannah since she joined up with yourself and you've been training? What have you learned about her as a fighter? She's disciplined and uh, she's, a, she's a very, very good fighter. And she's got all the tools. She's clever in there, takes her instructions well. And she's a good, uh, she's a good student of the game. But ultimately she can fight, she can box and she's tough. So she ticks a lot of boxes, and she's a fabulous athlete as well. She can do the rounds. So, um, no, I'm very excited. I think, um, I think we're on the verge of another superstar woman in uh, British boxing with Savannah Marshall. I was going to ask you, how, uh, are you surprised at all that there's been, obviously been this surge of support following women's boxing, of how much it's grown over these past few years? You know, Katie Taylor being the, the star name, certainly across you know, the UK and Ireland. What, 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 what is it? Why do you think there has been such a surge now? I think because uh, everybody's realised, you know, and uh, I put it mostly down to Katie Taylor, I would say, you know, because a punch variation, her accuracy of shots, a punch power as well, and being in war fights, you know, that fight she had against uh, that, what was her name? In, uh, yeah, in that, that was the best woman's fight I've ever seen, you know, so if anybody can't get can't get motivated with women's boxing after seeing that fight. You know, I don't know what they're watching. So I think women's boxing is on the up. It definitely is. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. And when the women's fights come on now, I, I, I'm just as interested in watching them as the men's fights. Just to move away from your camp here. Obviously, we touched on it earlier, you know, Ruiz Joshua too. We'll move on to that now, out in Saudi. I remember when I came to interview before the fight, you said one of AJ's biggest issues was he, he moves as one, he moves like a pole. Obviously, we saw a different type of AJ against Ruiz. 
How impressed was you with AJ? Or what did you see that he still needs to work on? I, I, I was impressed with his performance and his game plan and everything. He'd done what he needed to do against a fighter like Ruiz. You know, don't stand in front. He used his head. He tied him up on the inside as well. You know, and um, I think that fight was for him was basically getting all getting all the doubts away. You know, he's, he had a devastating loss in the first fight, and I just feel that uh, in that fight he was very very cautious as well. And uh, said before, you know, he's fight, fighting two men in there. He's fighting his own demons and he's fighting Ruiz as well. So a hell of a lot of pressure in that fight. So I think um, I think now now he's come through that. I think we'll see even a better Joshua next time. Did you feel that he did that that new style that he was able to show us? Do you think that's probably the best way for him to move forwards, or is that just something that he just needs to keep in his locker in case he's going to need to fall back on it at some point? What what was your thoughts on that type of style that we saw from him against Ruiz? No, you can't stand there, and you know the style he had is only going to work. You're gonna you're going to come unstuck with that style because you're standing there and you you're looking to land big powerful shots. So like I said. You know, this job is not called boxing for nothing. So he is a boxer and he's got power. And, you know, he's got the same amount of power as what he does anyway, when he, even with the heavier weight. You know, because he hit, uh, when he landed on Rui, he's hitting with the right hand early on. You know, he, he shook him to his boots with it. So he can hit. So like I said, um, I think uh, he's just got to refine what he's, what he's done there. Because look, it's a heavyweight division. You get it and you'll stay it. So, like I said, even with fighters, nobody's got cast iron chins. Even Yui, 26, 27 fights, never been down or anything else. Don't rely on that. Anybody gets it. If he gets it properly, you'll all hit the deck. You know, don't, we're all only human. So, like I said, uh, it's an art of boxing. You have to move. You can't stand still. AJ's weight on the night was underneath 17 stone, whereas Ruiz put on another stone, stone and a half in comparison to what it was in the first fight. What did you make of the way? How surprised were you that Ruiz came in so much heavier than the first bat? Well, I've heard comments about not at a good gym and doing it their own way and this and that. But look, I don't buy any of it. I'm not, uh, from what I see, that was Ruiz's game plan to come in at that weight. Because look, he was good. Any man that's training the self and eating pizzas or whatever they're doing can't put pressure on like he was putting on for 12 rounds you know even at the end of the round he never stopped trying Ruiz but Joshua just wasn't there and when he did throw his punches Ruiz he was still fast he was there so he, he'd had an excellent training camp he was fit he was ready he just come in with the extra weight thinking you know when I do catch when I do catch you I'll catch you and I'll put you to sleep that was his game plan but it failed it wasn't a good game plan you know, if anything, he should have come in even, <laughs> he should have come the same weight, but the other way, yeah. lighter than the first fight. That's, you know, if he wanted to retain them belts, he should have come in there at least a stone and a half lighter than when he fought him in the first fight. We'd have seen a different outcome altogether. Because look, people are that weight, and the same with uh, Ruiz, he's, he's a good boxer, Ruiz, he's a good fighter. But like I said, his feet and his structure lets him down because he can't move, he can't turn. And if you, if you go back to the interviews I've done before the fight, I said exactly the same thing. And that's how you can beat fighters like that. Obviously AJ reclaiming those world titles now, people trying to give their ideas and opinions as to how to rank the current heavyweight scene. Do you see AJ as the number one in the heavyweight division now or do you see it as somebody else? Um, no, because there's other fighters out there. I don't think anybody's number one until they've gone through everybody and beat the best out there and that's it. And that hasn't happened as yet. I think the heavyweight game is, is wide open at the moment and I see um, any, anything, can, uh, anything can happen. Just to stick with that card as well, obviously Dillian White, we've briefly spoken it earlier, making his comeback after his issues away from the sport itself. What was your thoughts on his performance against Marius Vak? I thought he had a good performance, you know, Dillian White was out of shape. You know, you've, seen, you've seen when he come in there, he was overweight. So, um, you know, against Wack, it was a good performance. What, what in, uh, did impress me is Wack hit Dillian with some good shots. And he took them shots and he stayed calm and he kept coming. 
And it was a good 10 rounds for him. And with the problems he's had as well, like you said, you know, you can get put to one side. You know, this you can, when you come on your case, this is like your world's fall apart. We've had it ourselves, so we know what it can do to a fighter's mind as well. It can send them all over the place. So to take the fight in short notice, and what a lot of people don't realise as well, Wack had been training very, very hard. He had a new team, new conditioners, so Wack was ready. Wack, Wack came for an upset. You know, yet he'd, Wack never come to make the numbers up. But it was unfortunate that Dillian got him <laughs> for, for that fight. But it was a good fight. He showed what he needed to do. And, you know, he showed what he can do even out of shape. So don't even go off that fight because when he's in shape, we all know Dillian's a good fighter. Dillian was obviously mandatory to face Deontay Wilder before the whole UCAD situation came up. Mm. And that was pushed back to February next year. Let's say if Deontay still holds that belt next year and he was to face Dillian, how do you think Dillian was, would fare against Deontay Wilder? He's got a very good chance, hasn't he? Because, like I said, if he can just... Look, you know, we all know very well, you know, if Wilder gets it, you know, they all struggle. This is heavyweight division. So, like I said, anything can happen. He's got as good a chance as anybody. What is the, the way to, to beat Deontay? We saw against Luis Ortiz, he tried to stick to his back foot, he allowed Luis Ortiz to come forward. Luis Ortiz had won every round, in my opinion, until the point of a stoppage, but he just emphasised the idea Deontay just needs one punch to, to show that he can win and to pick up the victory. It, how do you kind of box against that, that style you, without, with knowing the dangers of Deontay's right hand? From what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing of Deontay Wilder and the way he done his last fight, he's got too confident relying on one punch. And I see him as a disaster waiting to happen. He's easily outboxed, Wilder. Everybody always seems to outbox him. So he's easily outboxed. So I think any person with the right tactics there, Wilder's going to lose. Because, not because Wilder's not talented. Wilder is relying on that power and he's relying on nothing else. So he's happy to let rounds slip by until he can land his big shot. But with that attitude, that's, that's, a, that's a recipe for disaster. And that, and that will happen unless he changes his tax, unless he changes his tactics, because he's on borrowed time there, because he's not going to be able to land that big shot every time. And, that, and if he's basically, whoever's got to make the final bell is winning it. You know, so the tactics he's got is just relying on that power all the time and forgetting the boxing, he's going to come undone with it. Moving back away from Deontay, just mock up to my time and just stop there, Peter, so I had to quickly stop and start. Moving away from uh, Deontay, back to the AJ card. Hunter Povetkin, you mentioned Hunter's obviously fought Bacoli before, Huey has fought Povetkin. Is there any chances that you may see Huey face Michael Hunter, or maybe Mike Bacoli might look to face Alexander Povetkin in those fights that you think could happen? Yeah, the possible is. It's all about now this year and um, getting these fights made. Um, but Yui, I think he, um, I think he's going to make a big statement when he comes out again, and he needs to make a big statement. So that's what I see, and um, I think people will look and then pay attention and see him there. But this year, Yui will make his mark, and you know whoever he's got to face and uh, get through to make his mark, he will be doing it. So like I said, we'll sit down. I'll sit down with my team and everybody, and we'll go through it and. Um, we're just waiting now to see what Eddie says with his next fight. So that's just waiting on that, but we're ready to go. February, any date in February, we're ready. Obviously, we mentioned AJ. He has to make his mind up as to whether it be Kubrat Pulev or Alexander Usyk. Just to talk about both those fights, obviously Kubrat Pulev, somebody who he's previously fought. How does AJ fare against Kubrat Pulev if it was to be him? Uh, Pulev's a good fighter, he's got a good technical jab and everything, um, um, like I said, he's, uh, yeah, it's a good, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it won't be a walk in the park, and like I said, it's the heavyweight division, anything can happen, but um, you'd have to favour AJ in that fight, I'd say. And then the other one being Alexander Usyk, <laughs> how does AJ fare against somebody like Alexander Usyk? Usyk's a different ball game altogether. I think um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a serious talent, Usyk. And uh, if, if he can make the transition as good as what he's done in the cruiserweights, he's going to be probably 
the next formidable force in the heavyweight division. He's not he's not going to be beat easily, uh, Usyk. We've seen a lot of you know talks that possibly Us uh, Usyk may face Derek Chisora if AJ was to vacate. If that fight was to happen, how do you think that one would play out, Peter? We never can tell, but you know, uh, uh, for me, Derek's always failed on when it comes to the actual world level. So, like I said, um, I just see Usyk as uh, we well, look. We're talking of uh, exceptional fighters here. You know, so I, I just see he's definitely in, uh, certainly within the top three or four. Well, Peter, before I do let you go now, because I've kept you for close to half an hour, final words to yourself, 2020, if you could map out the perfect year, what would it be? You know, you can never say what a perfect year is. We'd all like a perfect year. We'd all like everything else, but, you know, we have to go and earn it and we have to try and get it. So uh, for me, it's for everybody to uh, do the best. And what will be, what will be. It won't be for the want of not trying. And, um, you know, hopefully, that's all we can say, is uh, please God, we do very well this year. Well, Peter, I appreciate your time as always. I hope 2020 is a brilliant year for yourself and the team here. Thank you for your time and I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for speaking to myself and Boxing Social. You're very welcome. Good to see you again.